Oftentimes, navigating life, even with all of our body parts intact and functioning, may prove a little bit difficult at times. But there are people living extraordinary big lives, even with a few body parts missing. Hello everyone, my name is Leroy Kenton and welcome to another episode of FTD News in History. Be sure to leave a like on this video before you continue and if this is your first time here, hit that subscribe button as well as that bell notification so you'll be notified of future unbelievable stories. And in this episode, we're taking a look at some extraordinary and amazing people who are defying the odds even without some of their body parts. The first set of doctors that my parents took me to told my parents with 100% confidence that I would never sit up on my own. First up, I want to talk about Jen Bricker. Jen Bricker is an American acrobat and she was actually born without any legs. And Jennifer, which is her full name, at the time of birth, she was given up for adoption at the hospital. And the couple, Gerald and Sharon Bricker, they adopted Jennifer and raised her as their own in their town in Illinois. Although Jennifer did have some struggles going up, her parents never allowed the word can't to be part of her vocabulary. Never say the word can't. Now it's because of their encouragement that Jennifer was able to pursue volleyball as well as playing softball and even basketball. She never saw her disability as any kind of limitation. Her sister, Dominic Mochianu, is a retired Romanian American gymnast and she was a member of the United States gold medal winning team of gymnasts at the 1996 Summer Olympics. Growing up, Jennifer really idolized Dominique and it turned out that they were sisters. Her mind was blown. Jennifer found out that Dominique was her sister when she turned 16. Her parents told her when Jennifer inquired if she had been adopted. Now Jennifer is a professional acrobat, she's even an author, as well as she does motivational speaking at different venues. Our next unbelievable person is Barbie Thomas. So this woman lost her arms when she was two years old because of an accident with an electric transformer. Barbie climbed on top of the transformer and then she grabbed the wires and the electricity from them burned her arms. And they were burnt all the way to her bones so they couldn't be used anymore and they had to be amputated. I was two and a half and I got into a transformer. The electricity went in through my hands and out through my legs. Doctors had to amputate her arms and did not think she would survive. However, today she can do almost anything a person with arms can do. She drives, she types, she dances, she can put on her shoes, she can lift weights, cook. On top of that, Barbie Thomas is a professional bodybuilder. She's been competing against other women since 2003. Now, when Barbie is not training, she says that she has her two sons to keep her busy and she says can't is not an option. And I really think that that's why I'm still here uh, on earth is to motivate other people and inspire other people and show them that you know, you can do it when you put your mind, when you put your mind to something, it's possible. Moving on now to the next person, we have Tiffany Geigel. Tiffany Geigel was born in Brooklyn in the United States, and she has what's called Jarko Levin syndrome, or JLS for short, and what it is, it's a bone growth disorder, and this means that when her spine was forming, it curved instead, and it made her torso a lot shorter than average. The generalization is we all have a curvature of the spine, so that leaves us with a very short torso, very short, uh, not that many vertebrae in our neck, so our neck is very small. Long limbs, long legs, long arms, uh, so it just really affects the torso area. Due to the way that the spine had grown, she's only four feet tall, and this resulted in her organs being very compacted inside of her body. Despite all of that, she's still being declared as one of the healthiest people that have her condition. As you can imagine, it is a little bit difficult for Tiffany when she goes out in public, because, you know, people see something or someone a bit different. They start to stare, they may say some comments, so she had some things to say about this. She says that the public treat her like a freak often staring trying to take pictures of her and they laugh at her and make cruel jokes about how she looks but that doesn't stop Tiffany she's a professional dancer and she believes that performing from a young age from the age of five years old really helped her retain a lot of her mobility and flexibility and she entertains large crowds with her dancing and she believes it shattered strangers misconceptions about what she is capable of doing now Tiffany in her own words she says this dance has saved my life it has helped 
helped me to continue being mobile and has kept me active and healthy. I didn't expect to be able to professionally dance. I didn't think the dance world would accept someone like me, but I was hired because I'm very talented. Tiffany also says, when I was born, my parents were told I was probably not gonna survive and to enjoy the days they would have with me before I passed away. My spine is C-shaped, so it never fully straightened. Doctors didn't think I would walk or have any brain capacity, but they were wrong. My parents raised me like any normal kid. I hit all my milestones like any other child without problems and attended regular classes. Tiffany continues to dance and she also speaks to parents that have children with the same condition as she does, just to encourage them and just bring more awareness about the condition. And at the same time, she's shattering misconceptions to the public. She's just living proof that whatever people say about you, that's all it is, just what they say about you. It is in no way a limitation on what you can do in life. I may look like I have a disability or may be classified as disabled. I have talent, I am a dancer, and nothing can stop me from that. The next unbelievable human being in this episode is Tio Satrio, the boy with no arms and no legs. He taught himself to write by holding his pen with his mouth and he was born with no arms and legs and I mean it's understandable he probably has all the reason in the world to live a depressed life. But instead Tio has learned to really keep himself happy. He plays a lot of games and when he's on his PlayStation he uses his chin to operate the control pad. Born in West Java, Indonesia, yeah he admits it he loves video games and he found a way to make it work. So he takes opportunities to compete with his friends and prove that you know they're no match for his skills. Several years ago, the principal of his special needs school said that Tio, despite being in the second grade, he's capable of solving fourth grade mathematic problems. However, Tio wasn't always as optimistic and a real go-getter and champion like this. As he was growing up as a little boy, he really struggled with his insecurities and personal issues. And often, he didn't go to school or leave the house because of his low self-confidence, as well as, of course, his physical disability. Now our final unbelievable person in this episode is Cassidy Hooper. Cassidy Hooper is a brave young woman who was born without a nose or eyes. Now doctors say that Cassidy was born with a rare congenital disorder, although they haven't been able to pinpoint the cause of this. Cassidy Hooper from Charlotte, North Carolina is thriving despite living with unimaginable physical challenges. Hooper was born without a nose or eyes. Doctors don't know why or how the defect happened, but suspect it occurred during the first two weeks of gestation. To surgically construct her nose, doctors had to take skin from her forehead and pull it down so that it could continue to get blood flowing to it. What they did was stitch this up and then folded it to make it look like a nose. They then had to graft one of her ribs and they used that as the bridge of her nose. This whole process for Cassidy to get a new nose started back in the year 2007, and at that time, time, the doctors had to actually carve a space for the nose to sit. Doctors also had to surgically reposition her eye sockets close together to put in prosthetic eyes. Now despite her disability, Cassidy is still aiming for the stars. She hopes to have a successful career in radio broadcasting. But I don't really need it easy, I just need it possible. Listen to that again. It is not something to take lightly. I don't need easy, I just need possible. That's all I have for you in this episode of FTD News in History. Let me know down below in the comments section what disabilities do you have? Take a look at these stories. Each individual one of them was definitely very inspiring for myself and I hope they were for you as well. In the meantime, as you wait for a future episodes, you can find me on social media. Those links are down below in this video description. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in another episode. World in a rough way. You were born without legs, put up for adoption, left in the hospital, and not even given a name. Yeah, but when God gets involved, that's how things turn into something beautiful.